guys welcome to with you today you're joining me on aqua fisheries and we are on the top pond and we're fishing today with a pellet approach just up to, to the first uh, fish of the day not quite sure what it is yet and what we're doing as well as these uh, as well as fishing pellet we're trying out these new midi floats now as you all know I fish with progen floats and I came away from commercial floats quite a few years ago and uh, the reason being is just the, the quality of, of a handmade float um, and you know when you go for company floats they tend to be well they are mass produced um, and you said I felt that you've you sort of lost a bit of quality there so when Midi sent me these I was quite surprised at how good quality they were so what I've done today is I want to show you a little bit about them and we're into the first fish which looks like a small little mirror carp and what we'll do is we'll go through these these floats and the little bit of a difference as I feel that they have been to the to previous uh, commercial floats that I've used it's a nice little carp to start the day Now, to be quite honest, today I, I expected it to be a skimmer day, um, so it is quite nice to hook into uh, to a carp first drop. Just up in the in the lip. Well, I say in the lip. This one looks a little bit mongoloid. Unfortunately, someone's obviously put a big old gaff hook on and pulled it to pieces which is not very good but we'll hold him up, still a nice little fish so you can see straight away that the method that we're doing is uh, is working we've not not been out very long and that's, uh, I actually bumped bumped a fish before hooking into that one so what we'll do is we'll get close and we'll start having a look at these floats first and then we'll, we'll get back out there and I'm sure we'll get back into some more fish Right guys, so let's have a little look at the rig now. The floats themselves, I'll do a little zoom in while I'm talking. Um, these are the MW range um, and mid midi wrapped is effectively what that means. Um, it just means at the end, the, the side eyes are hand wrapped um, to give extra strength. Um, and the wire stems, the ones I've got here, and the F1 style floats. So they are part of their signature range and Rob Wharton and various other people uh, matchmen have developed them so they are aimed at a match fishing audience um, but obviously uh, great for F1 fishing what, what a lot of pleasure anglers like myself do um, and you know they feel like a really stable float um, they're really visible in the water but really delicate as well which is, is really good and, and having the fact that the hand wrapped um, to finish it off just makes me feel that it's got a little bit more touch than some of the old balsa style floats that we used to have in the past and with that flexi wire <clears throat> just gives it extra stability which is really good now i've got the f1 4b 10s the 4b 12s and the 4b 14s uh, models with me here and it's just a various and different sizes depending on what depths you're doing um and what size fish you're going for so really really decent looking floats so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with that so the rig itself will go into the rig that we've got today so we've got oh, um, 013 sorry oh, 014 gen pro line um, from the Dacron which is on a really light 8 hollow <clears throat> down to a F1W 4 uh, by 10 um, and that's uh, one of the, obviously these um, midi M MW floats so <clears throat> like I say it's got a little wire stem really stable and the, as the name suggests I've got four number 10s down the line I've got one just under the float one in the middle one just before the hook link and then one about six inches from the hook um, and the hook link itself is 013 Gen Pro and the hook is a size 18 Drennan match hook and that's got like a straight shank um, really fine wire and um, guru pellet hooks are just as good and um, but it's got really fine wire slightly wider gape um, and really sharp and the reason that is is because today we're going to be fishing with expanders so for me you need a really delicate really fine hook 
allows you to pull straight out of into the fish and you know they're really sharp which hooks up really quickly and which is really important when you're fishing a bait like corn or expanders for example that we are today we have got some corn but that's not that's maybe for a little bit of a fit another filming session uh, later on but as main part of attack today is feeding micro pellets and fishing that expander over the top if, if it gets a little bit more difficult um, we might try hard pellets um, and so we can leave it in a little longer and, and see if there's anything that prefers a hard pellet but I think today we'll be absolutely fine with that expander um, and just on the end as you can see if you watch my uh, Lindome video uh, we've got a little bit of a cad pot that just allows me to regulate the feeding so if I want to put in a bigger pot because I feel there's quite a few fish in the peg then I can do if I want to to make it smaller or feed smaller amounts then I can do as well and I just press that in and tap it out when we get to full length so we're fishing at the full 10.2 meters um well it'll be slightly less than that to be honest because we've got the shorter kit on so around 10 meters um we're fishing today uh with obviously the 1001 um and I've, in front of me which you'll have picked up on the gopro on the original footage on uh, when we just started we, we've got a, a tree in front of us now i fish this venue quite often so uh, in the past not not so much now but it they can't know where I want to go. Um, we are only fishing light elastics, so I'm fishing anyway. If I was fishing, I found a 13 meter pole or 14 meter pole, I wouldn't fish right up against it. There's, the roots are sort of curly, undercut roots, um, so I'm fishing around two meters away from that, um, which I would do if I, if I had a lot longer pole. And it's just about hooking them and then pulling and coming back nice and steady, sink the tip, um, and they usually swim this way. He says, fingers crossed. Um, but enough chatter on what we need to do is get back in <clears throat> keep those fish there and keep uh, catching so what we'll do put a bit more bait on we'll get back out there and i'll join you in a couple of seconds and fingers crossed we'll be into some more fish right guys i'm gonna do my best for camera angles today but it's quite a precarious effectively a path um so I'll do my very best um so we're gonna just hook and expand the pellet on um really simple i know you can't see up close but it's just a case of hooking and rolling that expander and what we'll do is a little bit of a close-up of that and um, just to insert there and what we're going to do is just put those pellets in I'm going for about half a pot at the moment just to uh, to get some initial fish down there I'm not going mad and, and this is why in winter I go with these little mini cad pots now in summer obviously I would get my cupping kit out and cup in straight away a, a pot to, or two depending on the weather to get the fish in the swim now I don't want to do that and if you watched the other day I didn't do that either um, what we're looking at doing is just attracting those fish in get them grubbing around and um, this morning it was cold it was sort of one degrees um, it's still not warm um, but it, hopefully as the day progresses it's giving a bit of sunshine and we'll get a little bit of sunshine um, we're fishing around sort of three to three and a half foot deep I would have said around that um, and, and obviously on the bottom now people asked me this question last time were I dead depth were I over depth uh, or slightly on the bottom so what what I am is about a millimeter over depth um, just just resting on the on the bottom like I said originally uh, the target species was um, skimmers um, with the hope of an odd carp and that may be still just the case of that that initial carp and then uh, skimmers to follow so we'll see how that goes and some of the fish guys Really positive bite feels more like a skin of this one, which is the really intended species of today. You see another thing that, that I've got quite a precarious um, peg. Actually, it might not be a skimmer. I've got quite a precarious peg behind me. It's quite um, slanted, and that also helps when you've got a, a lighter elastic on for when you're shipping back. I've got two rollers which are just remain flat the matrix ones have got these that's another little cat these matrix ones have got a, a little fold out leg for when you're sort of fishing at that 
lower um, sort of height uh, when you're on a hill. Another little carp. A little skimmer the way it swam out. Nice to see a, a few little carp. So that's like a little com common this one. Not a bad little stamp. Bad stamp of fish. Putting up a good account of itself. And these little, they just can't, in the winter months especially, they just, they just can't resist these expanders. It's just such a nice bait to fish with. He's in the net. That was nice, nice stamp that one. And again, I think it's, is a, is a, it's a better looking one, but it's still, it's still a bit munterish. When the hooks come out in the net, and that's where well, you got to keep that tight line on, guys. That one shows there perfectly. Why you need to do that? This one's a lovely fish. I didn't expect to get into any of these today. And he's blind actually in one eye, which is a bit mongoloid, but still a nice fish. Put him back and uh, get him back. He's like a, a bar of ice. Well, two nice carp to start the uh, the session. We'll, we'll get back out there. Positive bite that one. Go straight for the island. Keep it under a little bit of control. Got to keep an extra eye on the elastic when you're fishing, that you, you, you're shipping your pole behind it higher. So make sure you get the angle that you need. Oh, that's a little ghosty carp. I wonder why it's so feisty. These little ghosties did an half pull back. Beautiful fish, this one. There we go, and he's in the net. What we'll do, guys, we'll unlock this one and We'll zoom it in and you can have a little look. Guys, we're going to get this one out. Oh, it's a little bit feisty, but let's see if we can hold him up for you because it's beautiful. It's a beautiful fish. Love, lovely markings on him. He's a bit, a bit wild, a bit wild, so. Beautiful little fish, beautiful colours. Let's get him back, see if there's some more out there. Fish guys. Lovely. Because it is like that one. I mean, and definitely to go to the island. Keeping a little bit of angle on it. I wish it back. This one pulling back a little bit harder. But we've got light gear on as well, you know, light elastic. Like light hook link and you know, light line, this is all you need this time of year. And uh, this can't, uh, it's our biggest one I've probably had today, is about three or four pounds, but it's all, all you need this time of year for them. Someone's got a little bit of spunk in him, definitely. Got some life. But lovely spot in this time of year. So letting him plod around. Every fish counts this time of year. And that, that's why he's pulling back. It's another one of those lovely ghosties. You can tell. 
straight away when you walk a ghost did it there. It's a beautiful fish as well. Lovely silver flanks this one. The other one's got had those sort of smoky accents on it. This one's got lovely sort of silver, silvery scales. And it's in the net. Beautiful. Another lovely fish. Put them up for you. Feel that. There we go. Another beautiful, pretty fish. That one. Beautiful colours on that one. Let's get him in. Let's get him away. And hopefully, guys, we'll be into another one. Another fish guys. Like I said, we just gotta be straight away on this. Um to get them away from the island because they the will they will go straight for them. We have got light elastic. But as you've seen, we don't always need that heavy elastic in the winter, even though we are fishing near a snag. Don't always need it. Um and which is important to, to say. And this one obviously fell to another expander and there's another carp and I am so surprised actually today that they're all carp and not um, any skimmers uh, which is what we expected but I'm not going to complain obviously I'd rather catch a uh, catch carp that's for sure see if this one's a little bit better, better looking than the other two and he's in the net Another one about a couple of pounds, but a little bit smaller than the other one. And I think a little bit, a little bit better looking this one, uh, which is uh, hooked in the classic top lip. It's perfectly hooked. And the downside is this time of year, when you have tiny hooks and really cold fingers, it uh, can be a bit difficult. Look for this one's got a little bit of almost um, ghosty colouring. Colouring him, I knew we were going to do with that. And it's almost got a little bit of a ghost in it, that's probably why it's so feisty. But it's a beautiful looking fish, this one. A beautiful one to, uh, to end the video to. Let's get him back. So, boys, you can see quite comprehensively how effective expander can be um, and micro is a combination now I've obviously not explained just before I finish um, the expanders we are using today are four mil um, pro, pro expanders from Sonu Baits and simply soaked in a little bit of water um, and I did them overnight in just tap water overnight in a little tub uh, and just put them in the car ready to fish you can do them in the bank in summer they do take longer in winter around probably 40, 30 to 40 minutes in winter um, to get fully um, soft all the way through uh, and again the micros I, I, what I tend to do in the winter is soak them a little bit longer around three to four minutes rather than the, the classic two minutes for two mils um, and that's really just because I, I want them to be a softer bait on the bottom and I don't want them to be sort of um, is, is giving them any any more sort of thought process that they they're not scared of them they're a little bit simpler uh, to to feed that they drop heavily and they go onto the bottom uh, and stay there they don't get wafted around as much but they're just very intrusive uh, and I feel that when they're soft it's a bit like when you fish soft paste and you have a soft paste sometimes it doesn't make the fish um, more cautious um, and, and the feed on them uh, and which is obviously what, what, what we found out today so thank you very much for watching and, and, and supporting the group as much as you've done I will I will say um, we're going to keep the, the videos as best I can to one a day until I go back to the work which will be the 8th so the 7th that Sunday the 7th unfortunately will be the last video that we do one every day and then it'll go back to every Saturday and um, like it used to and I, I, I'm really pleased for the support and thank the support that we've had through this um, 
this lockdown and hopefully I've brought you a little bit of joy with uh, this lockdown 2 series and hopefully we won't have to do another lockdown series and um, that, that that would that would be very nice um, so if you do want to join us on the Facebook group we're, we're still trying to get the live feeds done every Friday night and um, we've got a competition running and um, that ends next Friday um, on the live feed um, for two sets of progen floats uh, but red and yellows and um, if you go on the Facebook group you'll see that at the top um, really good uh, floats for you to try out um, and, and getting back to today these midi floats they, they've been really good really sensitive um, and if you are looking at a commercial float then they are a really good a really good float um, I, I am really pleasantly surprised with like I said a, a lot over the years I'm I've not I've not used them since since I've gone to to handmade ones but having that handmade finish to it you know they're, they're great um, so join us on the Facebook group at Angling For You and you can see all those little perks and things that, that we do on the group join us on the Instagram if you're just into photos uh, at Angling Underscore For You and you can see what we get up to with um, photos and little video clips and if you would like share and subscribe and share with your friends and until the next one guys thanks very much for watching tight lines